Welcome back for VEDA video every day in August, day two. I decided I'm pretty much going to focus on scrapbooking for my videos for the month. I certainly have plenty of things to do. And hopefully, um, the goal was that I would be able to use this to actually complete a bunch of projects that I started and not finished. And so I thought I would make a video for each unfinished album showing the album as it is right now, talking about what I'm going to do to it, and then um, doing another flip through after I finish it, either showing the rest of the album if it's partially completed or showing what I added and changed if I was just going to be adding some things. So um, today, and we'll see how that goes, the, the video that I showed yesterday um, I think if I just put in a day of hard work, I can finish. But then I was looking at some of my other unfinished projects and they are in much more of a disorganized state that I will not, I just know with everything that I have going on, I'm not going to be able to finish them in this month. So we'll see what happens. Um, anyway, so this album is from 2015. So 2015, I decided that I was going to do Project Life and try and do it in a much more typical manner where I have a week and I do a title card with a week, which you'll see when I show some of my additional Project Life albums later in the month. That's not usually how I've done things, but I have a title card and I see what the week is and sometimes it might be a two page spread for a week. Sometimes it might be a singular day, but then take um, either a picture a day or realistically it ended up being that there were a few things throughout the week that I would take pictures of um, and then just combine it into one layout. And the thing that makes it cohesive is that all of these things took place in that month. That's kind of the, the cohesive factor. So like, for example, this one was February 9th through the 15th. And I have like, we went to popcorn, which a popcorn to the movies one night. Uh, my daughter playing a guitar. I journaled about a few different things that we did. But then the big thing was Valentine's Day and I showed our Valentine's and talked about that. So it's not necessarily a photo every day. Um, I guess a lot of weeks kind of were similar. Maybe there was one big thing and a lot of other things. So this one I have week in review. I was talking about my commute for my driving, uh, church service we went to, something with my son, the weather. But then I have this page is just all these park pictures that I took of one event so and then I think I tried this album is absolutely huge it's so thick it's so heavy um I guess that's why people that do project life in this manner often have multiple albums I can't really bring myself to do more than one album for a year so I think I tried most times to have a week on one side especially if I didn't have some event or something that I had a bunch of pictures from. So what I did this particular year in order to make that happen was I was kind of serving two purposes. So when I would, on my lunch break, or when I would first come out of work, I would go into my car and use the Project Life app and also a little bit of, I think it's called Pick Stitch which is where I would put words and things on the picture. Now, I think you can now do this in the Project Life app, but this was made in real time initially back in 2015. So you couldn't, the Project Life app has come really far from what it first started as. So, um, and you'll see I have some of these post-its. I'll come back to that. I was wanting to kind of, this album is huge. And so I was wanting to kind of flip through some of the pages as I talk initially about what I was doing, and then I'll come back to what I need to change in it. So I was also basically kind of a similar scenario to what I'm in this year. It's just, there were kind of things going on at work that it was really nice for me to take a break at lunch or even right after work before I hit the road for my commute, which was often really stressful 
to be able to just kind of focus on my own thing. Oh, I have this, this album I have to do if I'm going to keep up with it. I have to go take my lunch break and go in my car and work on my scrapbooking. And it just kind of gave me a justifiable excuse to not take part in some of the workplace drama or whatever. And um, this year I'm just kind of, there's just so much going on that I've decided that I just want to spend more time on some of my crafting projects and less time engaging with things like social media or just kind of some of the stuff that's going on in the media. So similar thought process to this year and um, that that did work. I was able to create this album and I did have this album as it stands was done um, probably by January of 2016. And I learned a lot through it so these pages were all digital. I don't think there's one page in here that isn't digital. And so there were some limitations to that. Um, that meant that I was only using my photos, although there are definitely places where I took pictures of either memorabilia. I'm sure somewhere there might be, um, I don't know. Oh, like here's a picture of a receipt. So that's how I took care of memorabilia was I tried to just take pictures of it. And then um, I think there are a few places where maybe somebody else gave me some photos and I may have just printed those photos out and put them in as inserts. So there were just a couple places and that's one of the things that I still need to finish because it didn't get finished in that time period. This was my daughter's birthday. I had an idea of I knew the picture I wanted to use and the materials I wanted to use in that page just never got made. Um, that's what this tab is. So basically these tabs were things that I absolutely had to do. As I was making the album, I had a little tiny spiral notebook that you could actually carry in a pocket or a purse that I made comments on things that I wanted to add to the pages that I couldn't do digitally or when I first started the album so like for example you can see this little tab was added after the fact I did at some point go through and add a lot of those labels writing on pictures at that point in time with the technology and stuff that I had was kind of hard it was a whole extra process and it meant it kind of messed with the organization of how I had my pictures organized and I just didn't really want to deal with that so I things that I couldn't label, I made notes in a notebook of label this on every week. I would put any notes of anything I wanted to add or do. And then um, also the thought process when I first started the album. So here's a little insert that I made. Sometimes I did make an insert. And see this has a post-it that says hotel room. And here it does say if the hotel has a pool, Lucas must be in it. This one was no exception. I'm not sure why I have this posted. I'm thinking maybe I was going to redo this journaling because if you look closely, it cut it off for some reason. I'm not sure how that happened. Um, but sometimes I did inserts. And um, so anyway, I was originally thinking that it was going to be a little bit more of a hybrid. And so some of that, things that I wanted to add, maybe it was either some memorabilia or a piece of chipboard or stickers or something that I knew I had and I would make notes about that. But then as I got going and I saw how many pages this was and how heavy it was, and then especially after it was all printed out and there was so much left um, to do, there was this whole notebook every single week. I had a few bullet points of label this, add this, put this sticker. And I just realized that it really wasn't necessary and that was just a ton of work. So I went back and decided what really needed to be done. And one of the things that I decided was that there were a lot of, over here, I wrote my classroom and I labeled that uh, because I think one of the things I did do was look at the journaling and figure out you know, would people be able to read the journaling and know what a particular thing was? Or was there something that 10, 15 years from now, I would be like, what on earth is that? Uh, so I did go back 
and put a lot of those labels in. And I did them in a variety of different ways. I'm trying to see if I can come across them. But you can see like there are some things like I just put this park ticket in here. I just put it under the under the page protector. Um, let's see. And then, so there are still a few things. So this one is a singular page and I had always intended, you'll see on the back is blank. I had always intended that it was going to be an insert between these two pages. So I wanted to cut it, fold it in half. And then I do have a thing to, to seal the page protector. Um, so I still want to do that. And then I also wanted to journal about this trip. There's no, you'll see there's no journaling here. Um, another option would be to put the journaling on this page, maybe go back and find some additional pictures or repeat some pictures or maybe do one really big picture and then do the journaling on there. That's another option. But I had always envisioned this as an insert between the two. So that was something that I still wanted to do. Um, I have a good amount of these labels that I made on my label maker and I tried to kind of be fancy. You actually can't read them very well and I know being made with that label maker, I mean probably I would imagine 10 years is the absolute most. They might only last five years. And then there are some other things like this I put in here. Um, this is also something that I would imagine that this ink and stuff is going to start to go away in a few years. but. Um, I'm not too worried about it. That was something I just had. So let's see. Well, I'll just continue to, so you can see like how many pages there were. Um, this was another, oh, I did go through, this one has some more labels. These ones are easier to read and, um, they will last longer, but the labels that I made weren't real super successful. I didn't really have a good option for that. I guess, I don't know, there are a few different options. And then there are things like this. I made this insert here, and then I realized I had this blank page, and I thought, well, why didn't I just put these on that page? I'm not really sure, because this looks really wonky here. So I think I'm gonna fix that. Um, there isn't much in this that I need to do. I might be surprised at how time consuming it is. Sometimes those things that you keep putting off are the most time consuming pieces. Um, let's see. There were so many pictures and so much journaling. It was kind of crazy. I think this might be one of the only years that I really tried to document pretty much everything. I mean, obviously you can't take pictures and do things for every single day, but I think every event, every special occasion, I mean, I did, I did really document our year and it is kind of insane how much stuff we do, how much there is. This album is quite overwhelming compared to most years where I'm coming back years later and looking at what pictures I have and that's what I'm doing and I don't realize how many things I never documented, which I think is okay. I was looking at someone's thing today and they had 109 photo albums and their oldest child is eight and they've only been married 10 years. And I was just thinking that's just complete overwhelm. I have no desire for that. So I was hoping to keep this video to about 15 minutes. So I'm going to flip through the rest of this pretty quickly, mostly so you can just get an idea of how much there is, because I still have a whole bunch to go. Um, let's see. Oh, I did make, this was something kind of cool that I did most of the year in the top left-hand corner when I made a the title cards, I made all the title cards myself. And typically they were so, definitely something, an outdoor landscape. Most of the year they were the sky on my commute. Cause I just, I have a long commute. And I noticed how the sky was so often just really gorgeous. I live, now you're gonna be noticing that. 
Um, I guess not always though, but I live uh, kind of close to the coast. And so the sky is often just really gorgeous. Although actually I'm thinking this year I might've done that haphazardly sometimes, but I think there was a prior year. So this, this needs to be made into a traditional layout, but it's gonna be really super simple. Um, one year, I think I literally did that for every title card. It might have been the year before this. And then I was just still doing that a little bit come this year. Um, some things I learned doing an album entirely digitally, especially not doing it all at once. You know, if you load up all your pictures to one of these photo websites and make a book, it's kind of a different experience than what I did. I learned that you need to have titles, subheadings, and then your main text, and you need to decide on a consistent, at least size, and generally font. You might have some exceptions to that, but I have got, especially in the beginning, I think I figured it out partway through. I did kind of go and order pages every Oh, I don't know, 20 or 30 pages or so. I do have this pocket in the back. I'm going to change this to a different type of pocket. It has a bunch of cards and printouts and various different memorabilia from the year. It's pretty thick. So you can see how thick this is. And I think there ended up being two or three 12 by 12 pages traditional layouts that I needed to do. And then just a few more tabs of things that I wanted to do. So I think I can finish this one over the next week or so and just call it good at whatever it is. There definitely came a point where I realized that I am the audience for my albums. So done is definitely better than perfect. You can see this was one of my very beginning pages and I think I have, I made this one and this one and so I have like so many different fonts and font sizes just on one page and that's just bad layout. So 